wolf pack. How's it going? I'm sitting here deciding how many Delilah tops I want to make. I'm wearing one, uh, but I have a few more ideas for you. And we could turn this into like a five week project because you know how many different things we could do to the sleeves? Well, today I've got some yellow fabric and we're gonna do the slits. Then we're gonna do the embroidery in the next session. So how is it going? I see you all rolling in. There are a lot of noises going on behind me. Uh, I think Wynn's out there power washing something. <laughs> and there's construction on going over there. And I don't know where you live. I can see you all rolling in, so I will know where you live because you always say hi and say where you're from. But in Michigan here, it is a coat of like haze, partly from the fires in Canada, partly from the weather, partly from, I guess, some explosion like south of me a little bit. I don't know but I'm staying inside. <laughs> so how are you all, by the way? So my new favorite color on this knit, and yes, I still have some in the store, but not much because I keep making more tops out of this. It's a beautiful rayon, has a great recovery. I think it would make a beautiful Delilah. So I was debating, should I add embroidery to this one or just leave it? Hmm. I guess you all could vote on that. Do I just make it like this? Or do I add something else? Some flowers down the side? I don't know. But many of you asked, how do you make the slits in the sleeve? And I'll tell you, it's super easy. But there's a couple things you have to do to make sure you don't have little wrinkles, I would say. You want it to lay nice and flat. So we'll take a look at that. Did you all get your pattern? Get it out of your stash. If you have a PDF pattern of mine, you can go back and download it. Again, say you change sizes, larger or smaller. You can go down and download it. So this is what we're doing, and I'm gonna be sewing for this part version. Let's see, there's a lot of versions here. I was thinking it would look really cute with a stripe going on the outside, and that's one of the versions. So I'm doing version I. Version I. So there's long sleeve with cuffs, there's mid length sleeve, and there's short sleeve. And then each one offers just a solid color with no slits. There's a version with slits, and then there's a version that has like a little piece of fabric on the outside. It looks like trim. So I'm going to do version I. Before I roll, I want to make sure that you all can hear me. I've got all the cameras set up. Oh, I'll, Susan, you got it down there too? <laughs> hey, thanks, Karina. Yeah, by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to my channel. You'll be the first to be notified. I noticed that all of you are on YouTube today because Facebook just doesn't seem to be getting this as fast. But I do see a few uh, Debras on Facebook. <laughs> and there's a few on Facebook, but it looks like a more majority of you are on YouTube today, which is totally fun. Uh, Connie, great to see you all. And it's so nice to have you here. I don't think I'm missing anything. <laughs> Two Norway woofies. Yeah. And so if you're on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. Like the video if you like it. If you're on Facebook, be sure to follow and hit that like button. And I will know that you like the show as well. So, all right, guys, let's get rolling. So the first thing we're going to do, let me take these letters down and we're going to cut this out. And I was originally going to cut it beforehand, but I had a lot of questions on which way to lay out the pattern. How does that work? Um, you all know that if, well, actually any, yeah, Karina, actually anything I do when it comes to cutting garments out, I cut every single pattern piece facing the same direction instead of taking one piece this way and one piece this way. Does that make sense? But this top takes a lot of fabric because it's only those two pattern pieces, one for the front, one for the back. Of course, you have a collar and cuffs, but the main piece, the sleeves are not separate. So it takes a lot of fabric. So if your fabric doesn't have any sheen or you're gonna make this a casual top or you've only washed a certain amount of fabric, 
you can turn them around where one piece will lay this way and one will lay this way. So I'll show you how I'm going to cut this. Now, if I was using a print or it was going to be even this ITY knit, which has a shine, I would have the, here's the front, here's the back instead of facing it this way. So is that enough sign language for the day? <laughs> I feel like a, a two exit rows to the right. We got two exit rows in the back and let's get sewing. So leave your comments and questions. I will keep popping back to read them from you. I can see most of them while I'm here anyways, but <laughs> I know I couldn't resist that. Actually, Green, I couldn't resist that. So, all right. Ah, uh, hey, Darlene, you made it. You made it. Wait, so, all right, so I missed. Who's the other one from Norway? I know Karina's from Norway. Um, who did I miss? Two Norway Wolfies. Who's the other one? I don't see it. Oh, here we go. Hey, and you guys know each other? You and Karina? That's even cooler. Worldwide friends of the Wolfpack. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, got it. Oh, okay, let's go cut. And you could use a rotary cutter, that's my preference, or you could use scissors. I will probably do a little bit of both because I'm always angling around the camera, so bear with me. So let me just bring up my camera here. I thought it was here, it just disappeared. Here we go. <laughs> that's my drink. Wrong camera. <laughs> Let's go to the cutting table. You can see my water. I try to drink seven of those a day because if I drink eight, I don't feel good. So we go with seven. All right. Looks like I got to take you here. Here we go. There you go. See the pattern? All cut out and ready. And thank you for the likes, by the way. I see, I see the hearts and the likes coming in, and I love that. So does Facebook and YouTube. It means that you actually like the show. So thank you. Okay. So I have a question for you while I'm walking away with my mic. I want to make sure, yeah, you can hear me. Um, how long have you been part of the Wolfpack? Now, somebody said, do you have to be in the Fashion Sewing Club to be part of the Wolfpack? No, if you're on here watching, you're part of the Wolfpack. That's what you guys started calling yourselves, and I love it. So I would love to know how long have you been watching the shows here? One year, two year? 10 years, because I was also on It's So Easy for 10 years, uh, I would love to know the number. So just tell me how many years, or if you're a newbie, welcome to the party. All right, while you're answering that, let me just talk about this fabric a little bit. So again, we've got a rayon knit. It has a good recovery. If you haven't heard me talk about recovery, it stretches and goes back into place. You do have a grain line, so you have to find your salvage. So here's my salvage, and here's my salvage. Fold the fabric in half. See if we can get this laid out right. Some people don't like to fold their knits in half, but I can see, I can actually see the grain line. Uh, it's also a little dirty. That was my fault. I think this was, this was actually the first two yards taken off the bolt because that is usually the dirty one because it, I don't know, hits the floor or something. So that's the piece I always get. All right, I think you can see this okay. I need longer arms. Extenders? <laughs> uh, okay. I should just lay like four pieces of fabric on here and cut four out at the same time because I want, I love this top. Uh, one more thing, we talked last week about the measurements. Now I cut one of the real patterns out, not one of my old prototypes. It's all color coded by size. I'm cutting the medium because I want it to be a little looser and I can't remember if I was the small before or the extra small and I don't want it to be too tight. Now, this measurement here is really technically your waist measurement. I know it's down in the hip area, but remember this top scrunches up. So this is really what your waist is, in case you're wondering. Now, if you decide to make it longer, or turn it into a dress, you'll need that number to take account. If you wanna know where that falls on you, remember this is scrunched up about four inches and measure from your neckline down 
to wherever your waist is. And remember, this will be scrunched up because that's how I wear the top. And then this would be the waist measurement. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so here's one. Now, if I go this way, there's no fold over there. So I have to lay this this way. Now, if I want to cut these, if you're running out of fabric, I'm just gonna give you a little idea here. I could lay this this way, but then I would have a center back seam because you don't have two folds there. Does that make sense? Another thing you can do is cut this one down here and put this one up here. And then that gives you enough fabric through this area that you could probably cut a tank top or something like that out of there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut here, just lay this. So anybody doing anything exciting for the fourth? Because I was planning on beaching it that day or going boating with my nephews and the weather just doesn't look like it's going to cooperate. Although I don't think they're ever right. So we'll go with that. <laughs> All right, so this is what I'm grabbing, just so you can see what I've got here. <laughs> oh, Savannah, you guys have to see this. All right, so I'm, I've got my weights. And you know, I got these from Joe. These are great to hold down your fabric. Oh my gosh, Deborah Penner on Pen Review in 2007. We've known each other that long. That's amazing. Bev says when I started the Fashion Sewing Club. Darlene, back in 2016. Wowzer. Time flies, doesn't it, when we're having fun? Mary Lou, 2019. Pattern Review, you know, I, I didn't even think about that. So I'm trying to think the first classes on Pattern Review, that was even before Craftsy. So that's a while ago. And a lot of those classes are still up there. They're not all dated as far as like videography and stuff, but they're still valuable. Hey Susie, how was your surgery? Just curious, is that today or tomorrow? Today, I think. <laughs> There's a lot of Susie Woofies. Two years, Jody. Wow. And I'll look forward to seeing you this fall. Very fun. All right, back to sewing, but here. Savannah, when she comes to sew on Tuesday, she writes on my chalk. Can you read it? Is my head in the way? It's going to focus in my head. Angela Wolf with the heart. How cute is that? <laughs> you got to love it. All right, let's go cut. Uh, why do I have chalk? Because I'm going, this fabric's really tough to see which side is the right side. And also, when you see me cut this out, you might realize, ooh, I wonder if this is why it takes so much fabric. Because you have to cut one whole piece. So if you're like, okay, I have this pattern, how many yards do I need? Well, basically it's from your neck to the hem times two. And then you need a little extra for your neckband, but you should be able to get that out of here. So I'm gonna cut this one like this, which will give me all this space. And this is going to be a casual top, so I'll probably lay my other one going this way. So can you see way over here? Do I need to move the camera? I can move the camera a little bit. I'll just raise you up a little bit so I don't have to stretch so far. Uh, for those of you that have this like weird smoke from the fires, I'm just curious to know if you're getting headaches because I'll tell you, it's killing my allergies. I can't even imagine if you lived there. or closer. Well, didn't they have like some, I think New York had some really bad weather a couple weeks ago. And I saw it and I thought, ooh, that doesn't look very appealing. But it just smells like burning. All right, back over here. Whew. Getting my exercise. There, now 
Oh, I can kind of see you. Thumbs up. All right, let's roll. One. Oh, wait. I want short sleeve. Change of plans. So these lines for the short sleeve here, it says cut here for extra small. Here's the small medium and here's the large. I don't cut this, I just fold it back. Because it should not affect when you cut your top out and I'll fold this under. There, so now there's my piece. So now I wonder if I can get two pieces on here. Oh, just barely. I don't think I'll have enough. Mm. Oh, well. Oh, well, there'll be enough fabric over here. I hate wasting fabric. I hate it. I'll just have to make myself another tank top. All right. Hey, Judy Romano, are you on here today? I had a wonderful chat with her today. I love it when one of the Fashion Sewing Club or Wolfpack members gives me a holler to say hi. So I want to give you a shout out. She made a super cute traveling tank top and it's in the Fashion Sewing Club. She did it out of stretch denim. So if you missed that, it just was uploaded today. All right, scissors, I need scissors. Uh, I gotta go all the way around. <laughs> Sometimes when I do those curves, here we go. Okay. Oh, that looks good. Now I will save this fabric because I could definitely get a tank or make something cute out of here, maybe a short sleeve with the tank, anything like that. And I also need some ribbing for the neckline. All right, which side is the right side? Uh, there we go. This is the wrong side. Put a little X on your wrong side. And this is the back. All right. Well, I already used half of the fabric, so I might as well just keep it that way so then I have all this fabric at this end. Or or not. I'm going to go all the way to this end because I cut a larger piece. And let's make it just this fold a little bit smaller so then I have more fabric to use for that second top I'm going to make. All right. In case any of you are rolling in wondering, why are all these dates on here? Because I asked, how long have you been a follower of my shows? If it was, and where was it? Because Craftsy, we did a lot of classes on Craftsy. We did a lot on Pattern Review. Then we had It's So Easy TV. I guess it has been a long time. So I just want to thank you all for hanging out with me still. I don't know, is that like a bribe? <laughs> hey, thanks for hanging out with me. <laughs> or else I'd be sitting here sewing by myself. Oh, which wouldn't be a bad thing either, of course. Okay. Actually, that would be a bad thing. That'd be boring. Oh, how was fishing last weekend? Not as productive as the few weeks before that. We did catch a couple nice fish, but not enough and not big enough. Somebody caught a 27 pounder. Somebody caught a 36, I think, pound salmon out of the same port. Yeah, that's huge, by the way. Let me just say, I would rather reel that in than net it. Netting that would be a bear. Okay, so this is the front. And while I'm here, I know I'm gonna need ribbing this big, but you all know that I never measure my ribbing. So let's grab a couple of our, this should be plenty of length to do that. Grab one of my little Angela Wolf rulers. A 
Pamela, if are you on here today? Because I thought you had called and you were trying to find these rulers. And when I went back, I don't know if I accidentally deleted the message with your phone number, but I'll show you guys what this is. Where is it? Maybe I have it on the other one. So here's the one and a half inch. Oh, they're over at the other table. I like the two inch. That's what I usually use for my binding. One and a half would be fine too, but I like the two inch because then I'll use half inch seam allowances. And by the time you fold this in half for your neckline, it'll end up being a half of an inch. So these, these are on the website. If you have any problem ordering, please let me know. I added security and that's been a bear. All right, so let's just cut, make a straight line first. And I'm cutting just straight across. So this is the salvage here, salvage here. This is the stretchy side. I can see the grains on here. So you wanna keep it as close to being on the cross grain as possible. And since I'm going to make more than one top, I'll cut a couple of these strips. So this has a rubber backing. Of course, it has the Angela Wolf on there. It comes in a lot of different widths, but it just sticks to the fabric pretty much. I mean, not stick as in glue, but sticks. So there's one. I'll line up this side here. here so if the other top is a tank top I'll have an armhole let's do two armholes and a neckline so I'm just cutting three strips I leave these hanging around anyways because I know I'm gonna be making a few more yellow tops and then I don't have to worry about cutting this out all right now this is where you really want to mark the wrong side. Hmm, let's see. This is the wrong side right here. Because once you start sewing, there's such a little difference here, it's really hard to see. All right, so we got three of these. I don't know how many I'll need, but we have those. And that's it. So how much fabric do we have left? So now because I cut this one up here, I have plenty of room for a tank top here and down here. I've got, well, I might have to make a center back seam or a center front seam, but I have plenty of room for sleeves. So, yay. All right, so here is my front and back. Let's go ahead and do the slits for the sleeve. So to do this, we're going to start at the sewing machine. And the reason being is because I use a basting stitch to baste my shoulders together first. Well, it's called sewing and then basting and sewing and basting. So you'll see. And this is how you can make this beautiful slit where it's nice and straight. Make sense? All right, let me see if you have any questions. Hey, Elizabeth since it's so easy. Wow. Oh, Marsha, first trip to Puyallup. That was a long time ago. All right. Any, wow. That is a long time ago. <laughs> hey, Diane, great to see you. Air quality here, Darlene. We have alerts all over the map. Oh, Susan, is that craftsy classes? That's right. Forgot you took, I think it was the alteration ones, right? How to alter? Oh, you are here, Judy. Hey. I remember that trip. That was fun. What dealer was that? I just, Mary Beth worked there. Oh, super nice guy. Oh, do a different color for the neckband. That'd be a good idea.
Yeah, you guys are all talking about the haze. Yeah, it's kind of like you can just hear it. I think they said if you stood outside, it was like smoking like seven cigarettes or something, which I don't smoke, so that would be a lot. <laughs> More is coming. Yes, it is. Okay, let's go so. Hey, Jenny, how are you? Oh, yes, Tidewater Sew and Vac. That was it. That was it. All right, there's the sewing machine. It's so easy, Eileen. I know. I love doing the It's So Easy. It's fun doing these live shows, though, because then I can actually meet you instead of just being on the other side of the TV from you. Okay. So you're going to need your iron and your Taylor's clapper sewing machine and if you have a cover stitch machine you might as well just throw that in there too because you're going to need it i'm using my brother luminaire which i love i am a brother brand ambassador full disclosure for any legal purposes okay so let's open our, actually I'll take you back out. I'm trying to find the X. Where's the X? <laughs> Slippery little sucker. X, X, X. I guess I, sh oh, there it is. I should have used a darker. So this is the wrong side. So we want both right sides. Now I'm gonna make this really simple for you. I do both upper sleeves at the same time. You can use fabric clips. I'm gonna use a couple pins just because I'm on a this live. Otherwise I wouldn't use any pins, but just to keep it together when I move my camera. All right, so I'm lining up my neckline. sleeve you know what I think I cut my sleeve a little bit too long no problem let's see if I can oh well, maybe not now on the pattern there are little slip marks and I'm going to show you that after I pin this together and I also need yellow thread I have green in here we were finishing someone's skirt yesterday with green thread. All right, so I'm just putting these pins in just to hold this in place. I really don't need pins for this. And I'm lining up both shoulder seams. Now, if you weren't adding slits, you can just sew all the way down. Okay, there you go. And let me grab the pattern to show you this what I have here. So on the pattern, you'll see little notches right here. Now, this is the approximate placement for shoulder trim. It shows you that. And there's a notch up here. That's just for placement to line them up. You can make the slit as big or small as you want. So that was the back piece. Let me check the front piece to see if I have it on there. I would think that I have it, although I make my own markings. Yeah, no, it's the same thing. Okay, so here's the front. And this part here would be where your slit would start. Now, I make my own rules on my top. So I know I want to cover enough of my bra strap, so I'm going to go down maybe three inches and then have a slit all the way to the end. So in case you're wondering if mine looks a little different than yours ends up, that's why. Okay, Let's see if I've got even just some white thread will be fine. If I don't have any yellow laying around. Oh. So I heard some of you talking about going to some new sewing events or going back to sewing events. 
And I'm just curious if there's any good ones happening this summer. I think the ASG's meeting next month, aren't they? Is it in New York? American Sewing Guild for their annual. I've never been able to attend that because it's always during my fishing season. Got to have priorities. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's a lot of other events and I can't miss my fishing with my husband. So, and my team. You know what I did this weekend? Fishing was so slow in the mornings. I made all the guys omelets. <laughs> yeah, I had this like, it's a grill thing that opens up. And uh, it can either do panini, so one side's like rough and the other side is flat, so whichever side. I don't even know what it's called. My mom got it for me for Christmas a couple years ago. So I got the ingenious idea of having a, I put a pan on there, like an uh, omelet pan, and made some omelets. Delicious. Okay, so three inches down from here. By the way, at the top, if your neckline you look really close here. This is a half inch seam allowance. So this will be angled in just a little bit because when it's open, then it'll be fine. So make sure you have a half inch seam allowance and these two points will probably not meet at the shoulder, but it will meet at the half inch mark. All right, now before I sew though, I have to mark my three inches. Ooh, let's see, I'll just use this. I usually use a measuring, oh, here they are. Measuring gauge. It's straight. It's a little bit better and more accurate than a measuring tape for this. So if you look at the sleeve I'm wearing now, just so you understand what I'm talking about. Right here, look at my shoulder. I'll try not to hit my mic. This is about, let's see how many inches, from my neckline to the opening. Two inches, hmm, maybe smaller, let's see. But I have a seam allowance in there too. So there's my slit. Yeah, two inches, hmm. So maybe I'll go two and a half to make sure I have a seam allowance for my neckline. Okay, so two and a half inches from the top. I'm gonna mark that spot. And then down here, I have a hem of a half of an inch and it looks like it's one inch, one inch closed. So this is what I did to the pattern. You can do whatever you want to. The pattern actually has this sewn to here, I believe. So whichever one you're more comfortable with, make up your own rules, but you have to do the same thing to each sleeve if you want it to look straight. All right. Oh, Clovis, what did I put in the omelets? Oh, so on day one, I put um, to cut up tomato. Uh, did I have onion? Yeah, a little onion. Avocado afterwards. I didn't put it in the omelet. A little bit of cheese. And on day two, I actually made them hash browns on top of the omelet and made sausage with it. Again, with some tomatoes in the omelet. I, oh, did I put mushrooms? Hmm, yeah, mushrooms. It's hard to keep track. <laughs> okay, so what I'm measuring here, if you look closely, here's the neckline edge. I'll put a pin right there just so I can keep that straight. And I'm measuring down two and a half inches. Isn't that what I said I needed? Because half inch up here needs to go into the seam allowance. So two and a half. All right, so from in this section here, bring you a little closer. This is going to be a straight stitch. And then all the way down to here will be a basting stitch. And then here's the hemline. And I already forgot, what did I say? One inch and then a half inch for the seam allowance. So measure up an inch and a half. Okay, now let's do the same thing at the other end. And I'll just sew this so you can see what, what it looks like instead of saying this is what's going to happen. It's easier if you follow. So, all right, two and a half inches down right here. 
I'm going to move this pin to the top so I don't get confused. And then all of this will be basted. And then, oh gosh, I already forgot. <laughs> An inch. <laughs> I'm measuring right here. An inch and a half. So those in the Fashion Sewing Club, the, we just started yesterday. Our new project's going to be designing skirts or skirts. It'll be like a combination of a lot of things. So this top would look really cute with your new skirt. Okay, so I have white in the bobbin thread. It's not going to matter. You won't be able to see it. Now, when you're sewing knits, you need to be very careful not to start too close to the edge or your fabric will get stuck in that hole right there. All right, half inch seam allowance brings me about right here. I'm just double checking. Yeah, I have my needle in my left position here. And I'll start just a little bit away away from the end. My stitch length is a 2.5 right now. Go for, do a little back stitch and stitch all the way to this needle right here. Don't sew over the needle, that's not usually advised. That's to the needle. I'll do a few back stitches. One, two, and then go forward. One, two. Now change your stitch length to 5.0. And stitch all the way up to the marking that I have up here, the two and a half inch mark. All the way to that pin, up to it, but not through it. And then change your stitch length to 2.5. Back stitch. And then all the way to the end, do a little back stitch to secure that. All right, that's one sleeve. Now just slide your other sleeve through. So I'm still at the neckline. All right, start right, not too close to the end. You don't want it to get buried in your needle plate. back stitch. And of course I was using the 2.5 still. Now change it to a 5.0. Now next week I'll add embroidery, but this week I'm just doing the slit. All the way to the hem area where we have it up one and a half inches. Change your stitch length to 2.5. Do two stitches and then back stitch two stitches. Try to get my hand out of the way. All right. So we have my, you can barely see the white thread. So it's stitched from the bottom of the hem, then it's basted, then it's stitched. Hi, Wen. Then it's stitched, basted, and stitched. Let's go to the ironing board. <laughs> Wind's outside with the pressure washer. Pressure, ugh, blah, blah, blah. Pressure washer. I wonder if I should just ask him to wash my car while he's out there. Hmm. What do you think? <laughs> I'll give him an extra tip. <laughs> oh. oh, thanks, Diane. I love that, too. Oh, by the way, I just saw a few more people rolling in. I totally forgot at the beginning of this show. So I don't post a lot on Facebook. In fact, I really don't go on there a lot except for visiting you guys or checking out to see what you're sewing. So I don't wish people happy birthday and things like that because I'm just not usually on there. So please don't ever take it personally. But I did have two big birthdays this week. Both of my sisters, Teresa and Julie, had birthdays two days apart. And I want to wish them a huge happy birthday. 
Love you girls. And in case you ever wonder how I keep all of this together, they're always helping with the Facebook groups and the posts and things like that. So got to give a shout out, a happy birthday to both of my sisters. Happy birthday, girls. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's saying hi to Win. I'll tell him. All right, let's go to the ironing board because this part's really important. All right, I think I still have Mary's clapper. Yeah, Mary, you gotta come and get your clapper. <laughs> But in the meantime, thanks for letting me borrow it. Not only is it signed now, it's officially used. All right, open this seam up. All right, give it some steam. And yes, this is my Taylor's clapper. All right, and let's do this side. You can tell I had the fabric in a ball. It's a little wrinkled. But I love this rayon though. Once you wash it and dry it, if you just hang up your top or just lay it flat, it really doesn't wrinkle. All right, so I've pressed this, both of the shoulder seams open. Why is that so important? And if you have slits, you're probably thinking, why would you baste this together? Well, here's a couple things. Now it looks like that's a little off, but that's just because of me doing it on the live show. Let's look at this one. This one looks really good. So it's sewn permanently with small stitches from here to here. Then it's basted from here to here. And then it's sewn again. If I were just to sew this and then the bottom, and for any reason my knit was cut not perfectly straight, for example, like this side here, let's just say I sewed it here and then I had sewed this end where it was even, I would, both of these sides would not be the same and they would not lay flat. So now if you have a cover stitch machine, you will run, there's my seam, you will run cover stitch on both sides of the seam and that will secure your seam allowances in place. Don't sew down the middle, but you're sewing on each side of this seam. If you don't have a cover stitch, you could use a decorative stitch. You could use a twin needle. Any of those options would work. So let's go to the cover stitch machine. I'll show you how I have it set up here. <laughs> Melody, I bet he'll do it too. <laughs> he probably would. Actually, I know he would. I can hardly say something and he already has it finished for me. That's what you call a great husband. All right, so I have this set up. Oops, sorry. This is the cover stitch. So I have it set up for two thread narrow. So there's my looper and here's my two right, my right and my middle thread, okay? All right. Get this out of the way. I'm gonna just move you over just a little bit. Don't get seasick, but this is kind of a weird angle for me. I think if I bring you right there, I can actually see. I can surge and you can see. That's what I was trying to say there. All right. I'm gonna do both sides. So both sides of the seam on both shoulders. All right, this is slippery little fabric. <laughs> so I'm going to line up my presser foot because I'm using the narrow stitch. Just wanna feel that that's far enough over. You have, you have markings on your foot here. I'm gonna line up this center, my seam with the furthest notch to the right. That's actually where the needle's gonna go and I don't want it to be right on there, but close enough. You need something to focus your eye on, otherwise your stitch will be very crooked. So my seam is right in between this notch that's on my foot and the edge of my presser foot. 
Make sense? I could really just line up the edge of my foot with the presser foot. That'd be fine too. Now, the one thing you have to make sure is that your seam allowance is open. The whole idea is I'm surging this down or cover stitching this down and cover stitching this down. Double check that your seam allowance is open. Now I'm all about efficient sewing. So I just slide up my other shoulder on here and keep her rolling. This is not a serger. This is a cover stitch. This is Brothers Double Cover Stitch Machine. My absolute, I was doing the major, major happy dance when this came out. Just need a scrap of fabric and I'll show you why. All right, give me a scrap. This does the double cover stitch, which really looks, it looks like sportswear on both sides. Where in the past, if you just have a cover stitch, I would turn my fabric over the other side. So this has an extra attachment where the thread will run like this <laughs> over the top. It's really cool. I have a ton of videos on that if you haven't seen it. All right, we're getting to the end here. I just have a scrap of fabric here. Go ahead and surge on that extra piece of fabric, cover stitch, I should say, not to confuse you. And now I have one side finished. Here are the threads right at the neckline. Where... Okay, that looks great. Now we need to go and do the other side of the seam. And by using that extra fabric, it just makes it very convenient. I didn't have to tear all the stitches out, or not tear it, but take the stitches out. I do that all the time too, this is so fun. All right, down to the other side. Now, I really don't need to pull my stitches to the back side like you've seen me do. When I do the hemming, you'll see that. Uh, because the neckline is what? It's going to be encaptured by a binding and the hem is going to be pressed up. So there's no edge here that could potentially rip out. All right, let's slide up the other shoulder here. And don't worry, if your stitch isn't totally straight, nobody's going to see it. If you're using thread that matches your top, don't be too hard on yourself. All right, getting to the back side, and now let's just use this extra piece of fabric here. All right, let's go to the ironing board. I think you'll see it a little bit better there. All right. Any questions before I show you the big reveal here, Jody? Clever. Yeah, it is. You know, thanks, because it just saves you time. I could pull those stitches to the back side, but what I was explaining is this section here and this section here, this is going to be turned up in the hem and this is going to be enclosed in the binding. So why? <laughs> it's not going to make any difference at all. On a regular sewing machine, Diane, so you could use a decorative stitch. Uh, you could use a zigzag stitch. You could use a twin needle. I love the twin needle. It looks just like the cover stitch from the right side. I'd probably choose the twin needle. But there's an overlock stitch that's really pretty that would work as well. Just make sure, it's something I did not mention, on your sewing machine, especially if you're going to do the decorative stitches on the outside for this, uh, use... What was that noise? Use a stretch needle or a ballpoint needle. Uh, Jean, what is the number of that machine? Let me check real quick. I don't remember it by heart, believe it or not. It's a cover stitch. There you go. 
CV3550. So just call your local brother dealer. Uh, they always have good deals in the summer too, so check that out. Oh, Bev, you tried the triple needle and it looked good? Yeah, that would look good. Somebody, did you, are you the one that posted the photo of that triple needle? It looks just like the double needle, the twin needle, but it's triple. It was very cool. No, Clovis, Clovis shared that. Everyone's asking, Clovis, did you try the triple needle yet? <laughs> I do remember meeting Butch, your husband, at Houston Quilt Fest. I won't be there this year, but I will miss all of you. And that's always such a great place to say hi and support all brands. But hopefully you'll still support all brands, even though I'm not there this year. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> oh, Jean, perfect. So now remember, this cover stitch machine does cover stitch double cover stitch and chain stitch. It does not do surging. So you also have to have a serger, which I'd probably go for that airflow serger because it's really cool. Maybe they'll give you a deal if <laughs> you get both. <laughs> there always has to be some uh, negotiating power, right? All right, back to the ironing board. We're just about finished here too. Oh, we haven't even finished the hour yet. That's pretty good timing. All right, so here is the neckline where I just went from one seam to the other. And see what the shoulder looks like. Let's look at the back side because you can probably see that a little bit better. So see how this double, can you see that stitch on the back side? And then on the right side, I just have the needles. I've sewn straighter lines before, I will say, but. As I mentioned, nobody's going to see it. Now, if I want to, I can trim off some of this excess. And if you want to do that, trim this off now. Don't do it later. Let's see what this side looks like. Yeah, maybe I'll... No, I'm going to leave it. No, I'm going to trim it. <laughs> okay, what I'm talking about is the excess hem allowance. It's just a little bit more than I would like. I like to have a little bit. So notice how I pull this to the back side. I'm pulling the seam allowance, angling my scissors. Just you don't want to cut your top and you don't want to cut your stitches. Just get a little more in here. So however you have to maneuver this, just make sure you don't cut your top or I'll be able to hear you crying from here. All the way from your studio to mine. It'll be like a microphone. Okay. And I'll do this side. There's a certain angle I have to have for this. A lot of times I'll lay the fabric right on my leg, but since we're on a live show, I'll refrain. So I'm pulling the thread, and as long as you have a super sharp pair of scissors, and I'm using my Angela Wolf Kai scissors. I ordered some more purple, but I, also, I have black in stock right now, and the purple are on. We'll be here shortly. Hey, Devin, are you on here today from Kai? I'm asking because I heard I'm going to, uh, you're going to be on Soy Machines Plus tomorrow and I'm going to surprise you and join you there. I'll go, it's not a surprise anymore because I just told you. <laughs> That'll be right after the brother show in case you all are wondering. So you know what that means. I'm sure Soy Machine Plus is going to have a huge deal on Kai Scissors tomorrow. That's at 1.15 Eastern because we have the brother show tomorrow at noon, noon to one, and then I'm hopping on over there. Actually, I didn't even ask Blaine if you're coming on or if he's announcing the scissors. I just assumed it was you, the photo bomber. 
Okay, and one more side here. So you're probably thinking, why are you cutting that off? Why didn't you just make your stitch wider? I could have done that too. There, nobody's gonna see this. I just didn't want that extra fabric flipping around. Okay, so if you spread this open just a little bit, you can just barely see your basting stitches. And you'll also see where it stops. That means that this sewn here was permanent stitches. All right, now let's go to this end. Spread this open just a little. You'll see, hey, there's the end of the basting stitches. And just slide in your seam ripper and pull out a few stitches. And after you do that, you should be able to pull one of the threads. And voila, there's your slit. All right, let's do the other side. There's the end. Just pop out a couple stitches. Don't cut your fabric. Just pop a couple stitches out and then now go to this end. Looks like there's the end of the basting stitch. That's why I had you back stitch because I can pull and cut and I don't mess up the stitches. All right, find one thread. And there's your slit. Pretty cool, right? All right, so I'm gonna come back over to you on the camera. I still have a dress on my dress form. I have to remember to take it with me next time because I wanted to wear it. All right, so let's see what this ended up looking like. <laughs> Voila. There's our beautiful slit. So we're halfway finished, that's the hardest part. So I like where this goes. This will open up all the way, the sides are even. And now I will sew my side seams together and add my collar and do the hems. So in the meantime, that's the slits and how easy it is to do. Yeah, now, you've seen some of my tops, especially the one for Threads Magazine, where I had slits with embroidery. I'll show you next time how to do that. All right? All right, so I'm gonna bring you over this way. There we go. There, oh, almost. <laughs> I was trying to get you where you could see the top. Okay, what do you need? What do you got, D, for me? Would it be smoother sewing by opening up sleeves after finishing the top? It won't matter. It's not gonna matter a bit, but you can wait if you want. I usually do this because then I'll give it one more pressing and then go ahead. The next step, by the way, before I even sew the side seams is to press up my hems. So if you want, I'll make sure that I do that on our live next time. We'll continue sewing this top. That's what we'll do next. And then I'll show you the embroidery. How's that? So this is how far you got to make it this time. And I do not sew the side seams until I press those hems up. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Mary Lou. Uh, where do I see the brother shows? Uh, well, a couple places. Let's see. Tomorrow is on the sewing side. So go to Brother Sews YouTube channel or Facebook channel, and it will be there. Uh, if you, do you get my newsletters? I didn't send one out this week, but if you've gotten the past ones, they usually take you to that. So go to Brother Sews YouTube or Facebook. YouTube's always a better one to watch it on, but Facebook is good too. Our time has expired. <laughs> oh, Michaela, you got that. Okay, so the Brothers Show is at noon, Tuesdays and Thursdays. I host it. Sometimes I'm actually doing the projects, and sometimes other brand ambassadors are, but you'll see me there every Tuesday and Thursday at noon. And then the show with the scissors with Sewing Machines Plus is tomorrow at 1.30. No, I'm sorry. 1 o'clock. I will be on at 1.15 right after the live show. 
And that's on Soy Machines Plus YouTube channel. Oh, Clovis, you're wearing one of the Lindas today. I like that. Christine, are you in the Facebook group? Because Clovis posted a photo of that triple needle a couple days ago. Any other questions? Oh, you're welcome. I'll be watching, just not conversing. Are you driving or are you at work? <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks, Diana. It is super simple. And someone said, I don't have a serger. Do I have to have a cover stitch? No, but they do totally different things. So the serger finishes your edges and many, many, many other things. It'll do a pin tuck. Okay, speaking of the serger, anyone who got the Brother Airflow right now, as of June 2023, I better make that clear in case you're watching this a year later, register your machine on Brother's site and you will get a link to the masterclass that myself, I put it together with Kathy, Kathy Stipe and Kathy Gandy. And it's 14 weeks of following along with great lessons and tutorials. So we would love to see you in class. But you have to register your machine to get in there. Oh, there you go, Bev. <laughs> oh, yes, the ovation does both. Yep. You guys both have that. So if you, if you can only grab one right now, you want a serger. Cover stitch comes second. Oh, <laughs> no, Diane, you're on my show. If you're on the brother channel, I would just have bypassed it. <laughs> it's okay. And of course, I'm a brother brand ambassador, so I'm using brother. But no, you didn't. <laughs> that was cute. Janet, I agree. I love my serger too. All right, everyone. This was a super fun show. It was great seeing you all. And you can go back and watch this on my YouTube channel. Be sure if you're on YouTube, will you take a second and subscribe and click the like button? And if you're on Facebook, take a quick second to click follow and hit that like button. And then I will know you like the show and I will continue to do sew alongs like this. So just don't do the sad button. <laughs> Although I've done that accidentally and I had to leave a comment. I really didn't do the anger button, sorry. <laughs> You're welcome. It's great to see you all. Oh, the serger classes are great. Hey, thanks, Maggie. I'm glad you're in there. And for those of you in surging, by the way, in my Angelof Academy, I have three serger classes that are not related to um, the new airflow, but it shows you how to do decorative stitches. How about on Craftsy? I have two or three serger classes on there, too. So lots of classes that I have. I love the serger. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, Jody, can the slit be added to the long sleeve? Yep, it sure can. And you could even add on the long sleeve, you could do the basting from here to here, close up the area where your elbow is, and have another slit down here. So just do the same process in different areas. And you can have as many slits as you want. Do them in your pants. <laughs> that didn't sound right. You don't want slits in your pants. But you could put slits close to the hem, right? <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for the laugh. And I hope you have a great July 4th. I'll see some of you tomorrow on Brother's show. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. All right. <laughs> Till next time, happy sewing. Whoa.